Hello everyone and thank you for joining me today at the Tommen Museum of Art. Today we're in the exhibition The Subtle Power of Photography, a private collection from Sally and Walter Rugeber. This is a collection of photographs that spans over 100 years. Today we're looking at this particular photograph. See what you notice in the photograph. Who are the people? What is their relation to one another? Where are they located? What could be happening in this photo? This photo was taken by Danny Lyon in 1964. Danny Lyon was a group, uh, part of a group of photographers whose work is regarded as new journalism. These photographers immersed themselves in their documented subject, meaning that they would often kind of use their photography as a form of journalism. So they would go to various sites where things were happening and would photograph the moment to document it for history. Photographs are often a documentation of our history as they capture moments in time. You'll notice that most historical photographs are black and white. And this is because color, color photography was not developed until the early 1900s and didn't become popular uh, with the everyday person until after the 1970s. This particular photograph is called Sit-In Atlanta with the SNCC staff. A sit-in is a form of protest that was often used in the civil rights movement as shown here in which participants would often remain stationary in a particular space until their needs were met. Sit-ins were very common to, during the civil rights movements as black Americans would go into restaurants and sit in places that were delegated just for whites. This was in an attempt to end segregation between white and black Americans. This particular photograph is very interesting as Walter Rugeber himself is actually in the photograph. You'll remember this photograph is part of the collection of Sally and Walter Rugeber. Walter Rugeber was a journalist working for the Atlanta Journal and when this sit-in occurred he went to the site to report on the activities happening and so he was captured in this photograph. He is the gentleman standing just to the right of the center of the photo and is looking out the window. Walter Rugeber has been captured in this moment of history. How can you capture history? What types of things would you take photographs of to document for historical purposes? You could even take a photo of your house or a photo of your room and look back on it as you get older and see how your room has changed or how your house has changed. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you next time. Hello everybody. Today we just saw a great photo of the sit-in from the Subtle Power of Photography exhibit where the collector himself, Walter Rugeber, was in the photo. Today, we're going to be creating a newsletter featuring a moment in time of your choosing. I chose to focus on the moon landing. Once you have chosen your history topic, do some research so you know some information about it. The first thing you want to do for your newsletter is create a title. Make sure that it's bold and catchy, as if you wanted to read it if you were having this event happen today.
Once you have your title written out, find out the date of your event and write that underneath the title. This is also the date of your newspaper. So the moon landing event happened on July 20th in 1969. Now you're going to want to have a space for you to draw the image that's going to capture your attention. When you look at a newspaper or an article, what kind of photo would capture your attention and make you want to read it? I'm going to be drawing a picture of Neil Armstrong, the first astronaut on the moon. If you'd like, you can even put yourself in the photo. Now that you're done with your photo, do some research and find out three interesting facts about your moment in history. You're going to write an article that goes alongside your moment. So my three facts I'm going to write on the front of my article. The first one is that Neil Armstrong was the first man on the moon. My second fact is that Apollo 11 was the name of the ship they took. And my third fact is that they planted the American flag on the moon. Now that you have your cover, you can either write on the back or add sheets of notebook paper inside the cover to make your article. For example, my article might say something like, today on July 20th, we had the first ever man land on the moon. His name was Neil Armstrong. There was no gravity on space, so he jumped around and floated. His ship name was Apollo 11. And while he was up there, he planted an American flag so everybody knew what country was there. Have fun with it, and then you can learn more about a moment in history. I hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Hello, friends. It is I, Toby, the great art detective. And listen, I'm so glad you joined us today. You are all great detectives. And as great art detectives, we should say the great art detective model. Okay, you ready? Here we go. We investigate those who create and salute those who inspire because we know that making art is good for the heart and questioning makes us smarter. I pledge to look listen and learn. And if we follow all the clues, I can learn to make great art too. Wonderful friends, thank you, this was fantastic, okay? We'll see you next time.